adjourned to 10 minute calls. Uh, Darian Fenton. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Well, I must say I feel sorry for the National Party backbenchers. I do know that they have to stand up and spout the party line um, and the lines written for them by the research centre, but they're getting a little bit boring, can I say. And can I also give the National Party backbenchers and, in fact, the front bench a bit of a warning? Because they are sounding more arrogant by the day, and arrogance is the first sign, the first sign of a government that's going to lose. And the fact is, Mr. Speaker, that this government has turned their back on the unemployed, on the underemployed, on New Zealand families, and that's what happens when politicians only talk to themselves. And that's what the National Party does. They talk to themselves, they talk to their research unit, they get the lines, and out they come. But the fact is about this budget, Mr Speaker, is the biggest, the biggest con job that has been imposed on Kiwis is the promise around creating more jobs. What a joke. What a joke. Now, John Key promised New Zealanders 170,000 jobs. Not once. Not twice. How many times? Three times. Three times. Three times. Three times. Once in election 2010, once in budget 2011, once in the election campaign. And look, there's been mass redundancies. We're not seeing jobs created. In the last year, mass redundancies, there's been mass redundancies at Dynamic Controls, Raycon, Solid Energy, Norska Scope. A TY Point, Axiom, yeah, I'm getting the Axiom Metals, Nuplex Industries, Aquaheat. Look, I could go on and on, but today, the saddest announcement, we heard that job losses in New Zealand Post will result in the loss of 130 jobs in the Waikato, um, 160 in Wellington, 75 in Dunedin, and 125 in Heartland and satellite sites. And so today, we've got a lot of New Zealand post workers feeling very fearful for their future job prospects. They know it's not a good time to be looking for another job with secure hours and good rates of pay. Have we had any sympathy, any mention of that from any of the National Party speakers? Have we? Any sympathy? No. Silence. Just silence. And the tragedy is, Mr Speaker, these are good jobs, decent jobs, well-paid jobs, where workers can earn a living and support their families. We can't afford to lose jobs like these, but we are. This is a time when inequality is growing and Kiwis are struggling. And what's the government's answer? They haven't got one. Well, no, they do. Actually, they do have an answer. Cut wages. Let's cut wages, of course. Let's cut the wages of Kiwi workers by taking the axe to Kiwi workers' rights um, and wage negotiations. You know, I've been wondering if the National Party thinks that the wage gap of 30% with Australia isn't big enough, and perhaps they want to make it bigger. Or else, well, he did, that's right. He, and, and actually, John Key said we'd love to see wages drop. Right. Haven't forgotten that. But, you know, if, if it isn't big enough, um, if they think it's big enough already, why on earth would they be proposing changes to employment law? That will have a knock-on effect to jobs and wages right across this country. And this budget is meaningless until the National Party starts to understand that. Why on earth would the government be proposing laws that mean employers can refuse to negotiate collective agreements? They can walk away from them. But even worse, why would they be proposing to cut the rights of Kiwi workers to meal breaks and tea breaks with a miserable provision? Now, we all know that John Key and John Banks enjoyed a cup of tea. They had a cup of tea. They had a cup of tea. They got their heads together. They got their heads together to plan to cut their wages and the tea breaks of New Zealand workers. All right. All right. <laughs> Today, Statistics New Zealand uh, released its survey of working life for the December quarter, and it makes very interesting reading. There's two things about the headline results. First of all, Kiwi workers are positive about working, despite the National Party's insistence. The picture they try to paint of Kiwi workers are being lazy, ungrateful, ungrateful employers, unmotivated, they have to be forced out to work by Paula Bennett and her, her uh, police people and work and income. Uh, but buried in the stats, Mr Speaker, are some other things that tell us a lot more about the issues that are facing Kiwi workers. The first thing is that one in every ten of jobs are temporary. That, is mean, that means they are casual, they are fixed term, they are working for a temporary hire agency or they are seasonal workers. And these are really hard jobs. These are the hard jobs 
where families cannot get ahead. And I wanted to share an email I had from someone that I'm going to meet recently. He sent an email, I think, to most politicians, and it said, to whom it may concern or help or desperately searching for someone who gives a toss. After more than three years working as an independent contractor with my own courier business, I'm at my wit's end and stress is killing me. I work a 60-hour week and haven't had a day off other than weekends and unpaid statutory holidays in more than three years. I earn $8 an hour. This is John Key's New Zealand, That's people. Right. This is John Key's New Zealand, $8 an hour. That's just absolutely and utterly shameful. The contractor. Nikki, looking puzzled over there, but he's a contractor. <laughs> yes, that's right. The second thing that was interesting about the survey is that 18 per cent, or nearly two out of ten, feel more stressed at work, 10 per cent have experienced discrimination, bullying or harassment, and nearly a quarter are working between 41 and 59 hours a week, and in fact 6 per cent are working more than 60 hours a week. And two in, ten, uh, in every 10 workers thought the chance of losing their job in the next 12 months was high or almost certain. So there's real insecurity, real issues out there, but the fact is the National Party never talks to real workers. Nick Smith, I heard him say today, oh, it's only $2 when he was talking about prescription charges. That was a great let the man take statement. Go back to McGee and close, Mr Key, and tell them that. And we have now a Minister of Labour who's never had to face an employer trying to cut his pay. And to make it even worse, he doesn't even understand his own law. Now, here's a beauty. A couple of weeks ago, Simon Bridges told BFM that Quote, at the moment you must belong to a union for the first 30 days of employment. We're That's saying no, actually That's the employee has a choice. Of course it's not true. Fact check, Mr Bridges. You are the Minister of Labour. Get your facts right. No one is forced to join a union in this country. In their first 30 days or otherwise, in your new job, your employer can't pay you less than the union agreement right. rate, whether you are in the union or not. But of course, um, Simon Bridges wants to take that provision away. And then, of course, there's Jamie Lee Ross's uh, bill. Now, Jamie Lee Ross has been given the job of running up the more extreme agenda of the National Party when it comes to workers' rights. Uh, Simon Bridges and John Key like to pretend that we've got this, you know, this sort of moderate approach. What do they call it? Moderate, moderate law. But you know, jo Jamie Lee Ross has been given the job by the National Party to run up this extreme bill, extreme bill that shows the worst, shows that in the beating heart of the National Party, they still hate workers, hate unions, and want to punish them by making it impossible for workers to strike and giving employers the right to lock workers out to replace them with temporary workers and starve them into submission. That is absolutely Orwellian. It is uh, awful to me. Yeah, Dickens, Dickensian, Dickensian, yes, yes, and Orwellian. So we are heading, despite this budget, we are heading for a very divisive phase in New Zealand, Mr Speaker. The constant grinding down, down of families and workers uh, is not going to... Uh, is not going to help build our country, and it will continue under this government. You would think after five long years of this uh, government, we would have got to a point in this uh, budget that it pro provides assistance for people who lose their jobs and to help build higher value, higher wage industries. We're just seeing the destruction of that. We're seeing the government completely ignore what the manufacturing manufacturers are saying uh, and you know they, they don't care about them that's right because they know best so i go back to what i said what i said at the beginning watch out for arrogance it's creeping into your speeches it's creeping into your prime minister people are noticing it they don't like it they don't like being told that they their issues don't matter that they shouldn't be listened to that the national party knows best and that people who oppose their views, they oppose their views, should be ignored or in some cases even punished. Unfortunately, this is a government that talks big, hangs out with its mates in the boardrooms and ignores those who work hard to make a living, but just can't get ahead. Just can't get ahead. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Nikki Wagner. Oh. The members